this demo is to talk about the tool flow that allows to design a typical application containing AI. It's important to highlight that AI models cannot be designed in isolation. A chosen AI model has major implications on the pre and processing stages and the dependencies between the selected use case, the pre and post processing, the AI model itself, the algorithmic performance and the required computational resources is complex. In this demo, we present a single tool flow environment where trade-offs between the different optimization dimensions can be made. We have chosen DPD for this example, but the tool flow applies to many DSP-centric applications. Why do we think AI fits here? Well, for a given sample rate, memory depth and degree of nonlinearity, AI gives us better adjacent channel power ratio and lower error vector magnitude than the traditional polynomial method for DPD. Now builds on an existing MathWorks demo. Digital predistortion is a technique where a predistorter applies the inverse distortion of the power amplifier. The entire training is performed in MATLAB, making use of the 5G toolboxes for generating and analyzing 5G signal pattern and using the deep learning toolbox to define and train a model for the predistorter. For inference, DSP Builder is used to bridge the gap between MATLAB models and implementation in FPGA. DSP Builder is a Simulink based library that allows generation of highly efficient FPGA code. In this demo, we create 5G data using MathWorks 5G toolbox. We simulate a traditional polynomial DPD for reference. We loop through a number of experiments in which we create and vary AI models and pre and post processing. We train the models, we create RTL, and we evaluate both the algorithmic performance in terms of adjacent channel power ratio and error vector magnitude, and measure the amount of DSP blocks that was needed to implement the structure containing both pre-processing and the AI inference. We can do this initially in single precision, but we can also evaluate the effect of going to half precision. This allows a system designer to, desi to select the best cost versus performance trade-off and select a configuration that is good enough algorithmically while offering minimum cost. Component linking the MATLAB model into the DSP Builder domain is the fully connected network block. It accepts a MathWork variable that contains the DL network. That is a standard uh, structure that MathWork uses to describe trained networks. It contains all information about all layers and the key parameters for each layer, such as the weights and the biases. This allows DSP Builder to automatically generate the network on the fly. It also means that model changes can be performed in a few lines of MATLAB and the DSP Builder design updates itself automatically. In the top left, we see how the model is defined in MATLAB. It is configured for three memory terms and a nonlinearity factor of three in the top two lines. On the bottom left is the DSP Builder version. The key parameters affect the size of the model, but also the pre-processing. They enter the DSP Builder design as variables from the MATLAB workspace. The diagram to the right of it shows how the network variable is generating the desired inference model. Please note how the model definition in MATLAB matches this diagram with four fully connected layers and three leaky radio layers. Simulation shows the ACPR without DPD in yellow, with classic DPD in blue, and with a neural network based DPD in red. We can see that the AI outperforms the non AI version. We also get a report of the required resources. In this instance, 805 multipliers are required. Then we modify our model. Would it help to increase the memory depth and order of uh, nonlinearity? Two lines of code are changed. We retrain and resimulate. We find that the ACLR is only very marginally improved, 
EDM also improves, but the number of multipliers has increased from 805 to 4399. That's a lot of extra cost for only a minor improvement. The third experiment, we switch our memory terms and nonlinearity back to 3. We also change our activation functions to 10H instead of leaky value. And we add a layer. All of this is done with just a few lines of code changes in MATLAB. After retraining and simulation, we can now assess the new performance and resource usage. We can also change the precision from single precision floating point to half precision and go through the flow again. We can generate a table that has all the key parameters, the algorithmic performance and the resource usage of any of the experiments we choose to evaluate. All this is done in MATLAB and Simulink, where the designer is in full control of the entire system. A designer can change system parameters such as the desired signal bandwidth, define and tune both pre-processing and the AI model, train and evaluate, allowing them to find the ideal trade-off between cost and performance. In the table, we can see that the 5x5 model gives the best ACPR and the lowest EVM, but does it justify the extra cost? With an environment that allows this comprehensive investigation, designers are in a position to experiment quickly and design a system that is good enough at minimum cost and power.